I have my potatoes planted. I do a minimal dig square foot gardening method for planting my potatoes and I found that that is the way that I like it best and in my garden it's very easy so I thought this would be good for to add the ideals to Shed Wars so welcome back to Shed Wars it's a global collaboration of gardeners giving tips to especially new gardeners and seasoned gardeners for this uh, time of strange events in the world you can go to Will It Grow's YouTube page and get the full playlist of all the gardeners that are participating in this collaboration. For now, this is how I go about uh, planting potatoes in my garden. I woke up this morning I thought about the task I had to do and uh, what should I do next. So today is a good day for planting potatoes. So I got up, I had my breakfast and I went outside. I said I should take those bundles of shingles out of my rusty truck first. Did that. There's two beds, the lasagna beds, where I'm going to put the potatoes. I want to put a layer of sifted soil on top after I get the potatoes in. I should go get the soil first. But the quad trailer is uh, full of wood, firewood. Gotta empty that. It's dry firewood so maybe I should pack it directly in the basement. So I take the quad and trailer and I drive it down by the basement door. Oh yeah, I got that all that split wood there. Since I'm packing wood in the basement, I might as well pack that split wood in too. And that small wood over by the uh, pile. So now it's like 2.33 o'clock something in the afternoon and I'm just getting around to actually getting the soil. This of course is the top part of my uh, sifter that I use to sift out compost. Quarter inch mesh. And uh, they fit nicely on one of these uh, fish boxes. That's the boxes that the uh, fishermen use and the fish plant use. I have two of those. And... I have two buckets here, so that should be enough. The soil here it's subsoil, but what I'm added for is the mineral component of soil. And like all soil around here, of course, it's rocky. So that will do well. I'll put a layer of that on top of the uh, lasagna beds once I get the potatoes in there. And that'll give it the uh, mineral soil component rather than just have all organic matter. It's threatening to rain, but there's uh, no rain in the forecast. So hopefully it doesn't rain. It did start to rain, so I put you away. Then it stopped again. Right now it's uh, breaking the clouds. I found putting the uh, crate up here is better. The sifter, I mean. Put a couple shovelfuls in. And then sift it back and forth by the edge. Until it's just rocks. Move over a little bit.
found a vein of clay. So I've been digging at that. There's just a narrow vein, but uh, get some clay mixed in here, and then I'd end up with a finer so a soil as a result. I thought about it, this soil is heavy stuff. And it is a little moist, so that makes it even heavier. The bar going forward on this trailer is bent already, so it's not a good idea for me to put a uh, fish box full of soil up here. So I'm just gonna do this one full, and if I need more, I will uh, come back at a later date and get some. This is what I got when I mix it up, you see. Nose together, falls apart. That's what they called, as far as my memory serves me correctly, a loamy soil. It will do that. When you get it moist, it'll hold together, but then fall apart when you touch it like that. So uh, this is a good soil to add a mineral layer to my lasagna bed, and then when I dig the potatoes, it'll all mix in with the other stuff, you see. Here's my lasagna beds. I'm going to put that soil in at least one of them uh, before I set the potatoes. I'm going to carry it that little distance on the shovel, I think. Eventually, see when I move that compost bin, the one that's only three tiers high now, I'm going to have a driveway every so far so I don't have to carry things very far from the quad. I'll first level out the compost in place stuff. It's going to be warm today. I'm going to have to take off the jacket right away. It's not a very big covering, but it's okay. Like I said, I'm just adding some uh, mineral layer to the uh, complete compost that I'm putting there, right? I'll need to get another bin to do that one. These two beds were still partially frozen when I uh, went to loosen all the beds before. But I'll go through and make sure all the potato beds, I'll go through and make sure all the potato beds, the soil is loose now. I got a piece of sod here I need to get out. This is all it takes, not actually turning over the soil, just sticking the fork in and going like that.
the next step now is to break these beds out level and smooth. Now to plant potatoes in the square foot gardening method, <coughs> each potato set should be one foot from any other potato set. So if you're doing it in a row, you'd do one foot in a row. But here, the beds are three feet across, so I'll start six inches in from this side, six inches in from here, and I just highball that. I put one in the middle. And I'll put one here. This bed seems to be a little narrow, but I'm going to put three anyway. Now I've got this stick put across here. This uh, sticks out one foot from the center of my little grabber thing. So one foot down. I lay them out, all of my potatoes like this. This is the back to uh, the one right in the corner, and the one uh, two beds up from the rutabaga. Um, I'm planting Yukon Gold here. should be ten rolls. It's only nine rolls. Well, looks like I'm going to have some extra potatoes to plant somewhere. I need that one too, which means I've got six potatoes left. I have them all laid out. I'll show you now. Okay, so this is Yukon Gold. So one bed, and then the uh, rutabaga. Then over there in the corner, you see I've got them laid out. Yukon Gold. And we go up two beds, and the third one. This is uh, the red. Now. I meant to do all the same kind and I was buying new seed this year and I bought one bag and realized I needed two. When I went back to buy the other bag I bought the other kind because they had two different kinds. It's uh, Red Chieftains and Norland Reds but uh, as for which is which I wouldn't be able to tell you. 
I can tell them apart from the plant, but that's another story. See, this is a uh, dock plant that I'm letting grow. There is a bed there and another bed there of reds. These two, so we've got the herbs and uh, then this bed. It's the Kennebex and Kennebex. This is the only indeterminate potato I have. I have this one laid out, so we're over in the sunny plot and a little strange colored one. There's only uh, seven rows here plus the one in the corner and uh, nine rows in this bed. It's hard to see them because it's down among the leaves here. Now, I've decided that I am going to actually leave them just laying on that uh, those leaves like that and I'm going to cover them in rough compost. I'm just going to take rough compost out of here um, probably sift out it out somewhat but I'm going to just cover them in about four inches of rough compost and uh, that way I'll get rid of this bin faster and be able to get on to other things I'm doing. Now back to Yukon Gold to set them. Get that bit of grass out of there. Move it to the side. Put a hole. So we're down three or four inches. Don't step on this during the year. And it'll be easy for you to take a little, uh, one of those uh, hand uh, fork things, the little short ones, and dig out your potatoes come fall. Just so long as you don't uh, step on it. And when they come up, and they're up, uh, say, four inches, I will mow the meadow and I'll mulch them with clippings instead of healing, healing them up with soil they'll just get mulched with clippings now instead of leaning across the bed like this I'm just going to go down the length and do these two then I'll come back on the other side and do the row that's on that other side Now, so there we are. They're all shoved down, about four inches down in the ground. And two of the things that keeps the soil uh, from compacting, of course, one is I've got it bordered and I just keep to the path. So I don't, I never step or lean in on this bed. Uh, the other thing is you mulch it with a green manure. So like fresh meadow clippings and that attracts the earthworms and the soil beetles and they keep churning that soil all throughout the season so come fall when it's time for me to dig up these potatoes that soil is just as soft and diggable as it is now i'm going to go and put in all the rest and uh, then i'll probably bring you back I haven't got them covered yet. I was working hard on uh, emptying the compost bin, but they'll be done. When I went to put the potatoes in here, I'm like, I think I'm going to regret putting that layer of leaves in there. When I was digging out the compost bin, 
we add leaves. The leaves were a year, uh, year and a half old. They weren't decomposing at all, really. I'm going to run them through the uh, chipper shredder. Well, if you can see, see a so bug right there? I'm going to run them through the chipper shredder before I put them back in the compost. So, as I said, when I was digging out the compost bin, there were so many sow bugs around where those leaves were. But, I was watching Herica from Herica's little Welsh garden, and she had tried um, a no-dig method for uh, growing potatoes, and something similar to how I do it, well, it will be similar to here. But she had a problem with sow bugs and slugs eating the tubers. Oh, would you be quiet? I never had that problem, but I never had the leaves down here. So I'm going to leave it as is. And right where I've got you standing now, I'm going to co just cover it in compost. And I'm going to see if I have the same problem. Because I'm thinking that if she used leaves, something like leaves or straw, something that has big spaces in, that that might have been the problem. So we're going to experiment with that. And whether or not I have a failure of crop, we shall see. Before you go, I have a new to me crop. These are Jerusalem hardy choke or sun choke tubers. They are, according to my research, a good replacement for potatoes. They grow as tubers and you plant one tuber and it multiplies. So in that way they're the same as potatoes. But they're supposed to be able to grow as a perennial better than potatoes do. You plant them one foot apart, four to six inches deep, same as potatoes. So this is the number one shed wars bed. I have ten tubers, so they will fit in this bed. I can't disturb the number two shed wars bed right now because in the next shed wars video we're going to be talking about seeds. Uh, growing your own seeds and that bed is of importance for that talk. So one foot apart. The thing about these, these are a flower, okay, related to uh, sunflowers. And you can see an obvious bottom and a top. So you plant them with the Bottom down, top pointing up. They're sprouting. Got a funny one here. This one I guess I'll just plant on the flat. Same as potatoes, just... Of course, this is a new bed, so... Planting like this is not quite as easy, but that's okay. We're watching these beds and how they progress over the years since I started my YouTube channel. I didn't have a new bed that I could actually record its progression. So this is one of the things that I was happy about joining Shed Wars was that it gave me an excuse to start a new bed and, like I say, record its progress progression from year to year. So that'll be it for this video. Don't forget, hit the thumbs up and check out uh, Shed Wars playlist on uh, John's at Will It Grows uh, channel. And hopefully I'll leave some links for you to go to that. And I thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.